We all are taught how to read x-rays in school. Usually they tell us to use a systematic approach with a checklist or something like the mnemonic A, B, C, D, E. Whatever system you use, foreign bodies are one of the things that need to be assessed for and identified on x-rays, which isn't a big deal if your x-ray looks like this. But I work in the pediatric cardiac intensive care unit, so I'm going to be looking at x-rays like this. So let's talk about foreign bodies on chest x-rays in the cardiac ICU. We can be systematic about this too by remembering common things left in the chest after heart surgery. Airway esophagus devices, surgical leftovers, lines, tubes, intervascular devices, valves, and pacer wires. Now this isn't a comprehensive list of what may be in the chest after heart surgery, but it will cover the most common things that you will see. So let's start at the top with airway and esophagus, as in breathing tubes and gastric tubes. There are two types of airways common in the ICU, endotracheal tubes and tracheostomies. Both will be coming down from the neck and should be close to midline. The endotracheal tube will end somewhat above the carina, while the tracheostomy tube will likely be higher. Notice the reinforcement rings on the tracheostomy tube. I've combined airway and esophagus foreign bodies because they are both midline devices that come from above. Here is a patient with both an endotracheal tube and a nasal gastric tube. The NG tube comes down from the top, is close to midline, extends below the diaphragm and curves towards the stomach on the patient's left. But remember, in a cardiac population, not all stomachs are on the left. Next up is surgical leftovers, things that the surgeon intentionally leaves behind to close the incision or achieve hemostasis. The most common will be sternal wires. To access the heart, the surgeon has to literally saw through the sternal bone. So the two sides are brought back together by wires and tied shut at the end of the case. Not all patients that have had a sternotomy will have wires. Smaller baby sternums can be closed by sutures, so no wires needed, as seen on this post-op chest x-ray. Surgical clips are small metal devices primarily used to clip bleeding vessels. These are small and have no consequence to us in the ICU, besides being aware of what you are looking at. If the patient has an open sternum, there may also be packing material left behind. This is a wide variety of appearances based on what type of material the surgeon used. Next is intervascular lines. Now this is a bit more complicated because there are a lot of different places that these can be coming from and lots of places they can end up. We can divide them into two broad categories, central lines and intracardiac lines. Central lines, which I'm including CBLs and PICs in this category, are placed most commonly in a vein in the leg, arm, or neck and usually end up somewhere in the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava. Here is an IG line inserted in the internal jugular vein and ending in the SVC. A line in the subclavian vein and one coming up from the femoral vein and ending in the IVC. If you see a linear structure, think about if it follows a known vascular structure. This one follows the path of the internal jugular vein, so probably a line. This thing does not follow the path of any known vessel, so likely not a line. We'll talk about what and where it is in a minute. Intracardiac lines are surgically placed directly into the atrium, usually the right atrium. The exact entry point through the chest is surgeon dependent. In this case, it's right about here. The tip of the line will end somewhere in the right atrium. It can flip into the right ventricle or maybe in the left atrium if there's an open atrial septum. Chest tubes are standard after cardiac surgery to drain blood and effusions that form postoperatively. They come in two types. Number one, pigtails, which should be obvious and are usually placed percutaneously. Watch out if you are viewing them from the side because they may not look all that curly. And number two, surgically placed tubes, which can be curved through the chest, like this one that appears to be laying across the diaphragm. This chest tube courses through the right pleural cavity and actually crosses the mediastinum to drain both sides of the chest. This tube looks like it crosses the diaphragm and is ending in the abdomen. But remember, the patients are three-dimensional, and this really is passing along the posterior chest cavity above the diaphragm. There are several types of intravascular devices you'll see on chest x-ray in the cardiac ICU, mainly stents, occluders, and coils. Stents are placed in the cath lab to keep blood vessels open. This patient has both a stent across the atrial septum to keep a connection between the right and left atrium open and a stent across the PDA. This is sometimes done as part of single ventricle palliation. Sometimes we want to close vessels and defects rather than leaving them open. PDA occlusion and ASD occlusion in the cath lab has largely replaced surgical repair. And unwanted collateral blood vessels can be occluded with coils. Next, valves, specifically mechanical valves, which will be visible on chest x-ray. These can be in any of the four valve position, and appearance varies greatly based on the angle of the chest x-ray and the type of valve. And last, pacer wires. Temporary pacer wires are standard after heart surgery in pediatrics and are hooked to an external pacer box. Usually there is at least two. 
one going to the atrium and one going to the ventricle. They have a screw-like appearance at the end where they enter the myocardium. Now we can put all this together and figure out what is going on here, except this might be a little too much, so let's look at this one. Before we start a systematic approach for what is in the body, we do need to exclude what is outside the body, which I haven't even touched on yet. This can be challenging and it can be helpful to pull up the chest x-ray by actually looking at the patient to see what is entering the body and what is laying on top. In this case, we have a NEARS probe, which is a sticker on the back, and monitor stickers. Let's remember our unpronounceable mnemonic and start with airway and esophagus. This patient is intubated with an endotracheal tube coming down from the head and staying in the midline. They also have a nasal gastric tube. It's a bit curvy, but still midline enough and ending in the stomach. Surgical leftovers. I see two surgical clips, but no packing. Lines. I see one line, an intracardiac line. It enters the chest about here and curves to the right atrium. Tubes. This patient has one surgical chest tube passing through the mediastinum, crossing the middle, going through the left pleural space and ending along the left posterior diaphragm. Intravascular devices, meaning occluders and stents. This patient has intravascular stents keeping open a BTT shunt. You may be fooled by the midline position, but look closely. Definitely stents. Does this patient have a mechanical valve? I don't see one. And lastly, temporary pacemaker wires. The atrial wire is covered up by the intracardiac line. The ventricular wire is more obvious. If you need a hint, these bow-like things are the wires tied up on the outside of the body. Follow those to find the screws at the end. Practice naming all the foreign bodies on these type of x-rays. Then you can move up to this.